Good evening once again. I'm Stephanie Rule. There is a brand new legal threat for Donald J. Trump, and it comes about 24 hours after his arrest on felony charges here in New York. Former Vice President Mike Pence will not fight a judge's order to testify before special counsel Jack Smith and his grand jury. That panel is looking into the former president's attempt to overturn the 2020 election. Just a few months ago, Pence said this about resisting the special counsel subpoena. I'm going to fight uh, the Biden DOJ subpoena to appear before the grand jury. The idea of, uh, of subpoenaing a former vice president to testify in court against the president with whom they served, uh, I believe is unprecedented. I believe it's also unconstitutional. Well, this is all unprecedented. Meanwhile, fresh off his arraignment in New York, the former president is doing the one thing we have seen him do consistently. Attack, attack, attack. Today, he called on Republican lawmakers to defund the DOJ and FBI until they, quote, come to their senses. And Trump's legal team is not staying silent either. Here's his defense attorney earlier today. After seeing that indictment and knowing what the law is regarding federal election uh, campaigns, um, I don't think we're getting close to a jury. I think this case is going to fall on its merits um, on legal challenges well before we get to a jury. Trump's allies in the House are also keeping the pressure on Manhattan DA Alvin Bragg. After we've seen all that yesterday, I think people think it's even more political than we thought this case never should have been brought. And what should happen now? It should, it should get dismissed. We're not going to stop on this. Nothing changed. We believe that he's overstepped. And Trump continues to rail against Bragg personally and the judge in the case, even though that same judge warned Trump about using language that could incite violence. In my own mind, there's no doubt that he's being wrongfully detained uh, by Russia, which is exactly what I said to Foreign Minister Lavrov when I spoke to him uh, over the weekend and uh, insisted that uh, Evan be released immediately. That, of course, is Secretary of State Antony Blinken with a clear message to Russia today after the arrest of American journalist Evan Gerskovich. He was detained and accused of espionage last week while on assignment for The Wall Street Journal. The journal vehemently denies the espionage charges against him. Back with us tonight to discuss MSNBC international affairs analyst Michael McFall, formerly the U.S. ambassador to Russia. He wrote, from Cold War to hot peace, about his time in Putin's Russia. Michael, what is Russia doing here? Well, it's just so tragic because Evan is such a great reporter. I don't know him personally, but I've been reading him for a long time. Uh, he just recently, uh, his last big article was about how sanctions are hurting the Russian economy. And that's exactly the kind of reporting that Vladimir Putin doesn't want out of Russia. So I don't know if that's why he got arrested. I don't know if they're just picking him up because they want to trade for other uh, uh, spies, real spies that have been picked up around the world recently. But it's, it's a really horrible situation that does not have an easy answer. So how do we get this man home? Honestly, I don't know. Uh, it's not going to happen through the rule of law. I think everybody needs to understand there is no rule of law in Russia. You have no rights inside that country today. That wasn't true when I was ambassador, but it is true today. And so I think it will be through some kind of swap, as we as we talked before. Now, you know, they already have other Americans. They have Paul Whelan. They have Mark Fogel. It's not clear to me that if they were interested in swaps that they needed to arrest another American. But tragically, I think that's the only way that he'll get out. Where do we stand on those other Americans who are detained, right? We can say all day long that Blinken is calling for the immediate release. But you just said it. Russia is not a land of laws. No, and remember when they the last swap they did, Victor Boot for Brittany Griner, uh, a, a swap that was a hard call uh, for the Biden administration, but I supported it. I think everybody was better off for it. Uh, but then those other two uh, Americans have been remained in, in in captivity. They've been sitting in jail ever since. Uh, Evan, of course, is is creating more news attention. And let's be clear, he was doing his job. Uh, there, there's no evidence whatsoever that he wasn't doing anything than journalism, which is his job, accredited, by the way, to the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. Uh, so you would think that that would give him some uh, cover. 
uh, and and maybe hopefully this will bring greater attention that all of them can be released. But but we should be sober minded here. Uh, Vladimir Putin doesn't play by normal rules, and arresting journalists in your country is a, is violating yet another uh, norm that that many autocracies, even Stalin, Soviet Union, uh, didn't do these kinds of things. It makes you wonder if Putin is particularly incensed right now, because on top of all of this. Finland just joined NATO, right, in the middle of a land war in Europe. How do you think Vladimir Putin has taken that? Well, first, I want to say how I take it. I think it's a fantastic victory. Uh, Finland is a real asset for the NATO alliance. We're all better off by having Finland um, in the alliance. Number two, remember the debate we had about a year ago about why Putin was invading Ukraine. There was an argument out there that he was doing it to try to stop NATO expansion. Clearly, uh, NATO has expanded as a result of his war. Um, and, you know, there's no plans to invade uh, Finland. So that suggests that that theory about what Putin was up to, I think, was incorrect. But there's no doubt about it. This is not in Russia's national security interests. Uh, just like, in my view, the invasion of Ukraine doesn't serve any security purpose for Russians. Uh, and this is another setback for national security uh, under Vladimir Putin. Michael McFall, every time you join us, you make us smarter and hopefully a little bit safer. Thank you for being here tonight. I found myself in people's lives during their most grief-stricken or traumatic moments. Their stories and phases remain etched in my mind and likely will forever. That is the responsibility and privilege of the role of Prime Minister. A role I never thought I was meant to have. The last thing before we go tonight, you can lead just like me. In January, Jacinda Ardern resigned as New Zealand's groundbreaking prime minister. And today, she gave her final speech to Parliament. Our own Molly Hunter has a look at her inspirational farewell address. Jacinda Ardern never thought she'd make it here. Wearing a Korowai, a Maori feather cloak today, she bid farewell to Parliament. I've always believed this to be a place where you can make a difference. I leave knowing that to be true taking stock of her time in office. A domestic terror attack, a volcanic eruption, a pandemic. The terror attack in Christchurch humbled her, she said, and she will now work to combat violent extremism. At just 37 years old, she was New Zealand's second youngest leader in more than 150 years. She was the second world leader after Pakistan's Benazir Bhutto to become a mother in office, making headlines when she brought her three-month-old daughter to the UN General Assembly. But today was about gratitude, about imploring her colleagues to do more on climate change, and most powerfully, about leaving the door firmly open. You can be anxious, sensitive, kind, and wear your heart on your sleeve. You can be a mother or not. You can be a nerd, a crier, a hugger. You can be all of these things. And not only can you be here, you can lead just like me. Setting a legacy she hopes will be followed. Molly Hunter, NBC News. A nerd, a crier, and a hugger. Jacinda Ardern reminding us all that we all have what it takes to lead.